الحمد لله وحده الصلاة والسلام على من نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين وسلم التسليم الكثير أما بعد As we continue in his blush trees with a great Imam, Abu al-Abbas, Taqi al-Din, Ahmed ibn Abd al-Halim, ibn Abd al-Salam, ibn Taniyah al-Harrani, Dimashqi, Dumarudad, 728, after the migration of our Prophet, alayhi salatu wassalam. As we continue in this blessed, beneficial book by the great Imam, for the time now, 7.30 p.m., 7.30 p.m. Wednesday, February the 7th, 2024 of the Gregorian calendar, which is a Muwafiq the Tariq al-Islami al-Hijri, Laylat Sitr al-Ishri Mashahi Rajab, the night to 26th night of Rajab, Aam Alf Arbaamiya Khams Arbaim, the year 1445, after the migration of our Prophet, alayhi salatu wassalam. You'll find that Shaykh al-Islam, as we were mentioning, in regards where he will find that he was citing someone of Tasawwuf. And despite of that, you'll find that he was upon the principles and the proper belief of what the companions were upon in regards to these matters. And like we said, Shaykh al-Islam Taliyah, rahimahullah, was showing the people that this individual, you'll find that he's saying exactly what I'm saying. Because you'll find during the time of Shaykh al-Islam, they, they thought he was calling to something new. You'll find that he was calling to something that was newly introduced in the religion of Islam. And you'll find that he was bringing varieties of proof in order to establish that what I'm calling to is nothing new. Rather, it's something in which the Muslims abandoned. But it's already there. But it's upon them to return to what the affair was upon during the time of the Messenger of Allah. That those who he taught from his great companions, and those who followed them with perfection from the tabi'een. You'll find that Shaykh al-Islam was calling to the pure Islam which the Messenger of Allah was upon. Calling the Muslims to abandon the innovative practices and beliefs that were newly introduced, in which a lot of people, and which a lot of the Muslims were led astray by. You'll find they started practicing all types of practices that oppose the religion, in which the Messenger of Allah warned against. Because all those newly invented matters, as a result of it, earns the wrath of Allah and His anger. And as a result of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not bless the ummah unless they return back to the affair of old. When we say the old affair, we mean it. The time in which the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa came with the final revelation, with the Sahara Muhammad. You'll find that Shaykh al-Islam was quoting that individual who's upon the Sawwuf, as we mentioned last class, everyone, his name was Muhammad ibn Khafif. He was mentioning his statement, and you'll find that he was mentioning the principles of Ahl Sunnah, the person upon the Sawwuf at that time. <clears throat> we mentioned last class, everyone, <clears throat> his statement, we'll start where he mentions Muhammad ibn Khafif, in which Shaykh al Islam was citing his statement, as we said. ثم ذكر أبو عبد الله خروج النبي وهم يتنازعون في القبر. We already mentioned this. He said you'll find how the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه that he mentioned the affair pertaining to what when the Messenger of Allah went out and he seen the companions disputing. They were disagreeing, and you'll find that they were disagreeing in the affairs of the divine decree of Allah. You'll find that the Messenger of Allah, of course, he reprimanded them and corrected them. To say that these affairs are very what? Dangerous. Based upon the fact that he taught them this was an affair which we are what? United upon from the usul of the religion. In which, like we mentioned last class, the Messenger of Allah became very upset until it says in the narration, As it says in the narration, he said, when he seen them disagreeing about this matter pertaining to the divine decree of Allah, he says, until the point, as his cheeks became red, and they started to protrude, similar to what? A pomegranate. 
or similar to a pomegranate. But to the point, as we mentioned, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu reprimanded the Sahaba and that he what? corrected them, that these affairs are not to be disputed over and be a reason of your separation and division. Rather, of course, it is from the matters on which the Muslims are united upon. And they also, they gather upon, they unite upon, and they also disavow and separate these themselves from individuals based upon also. For these type of matters are pertaining to the fundamentals as we mentioned. Also the hadith, Muhammad ibn Khafif mentioned, this is where we last stop. سَتَفْتَرِقُ أُمَّتِي عَلَى ثَلَاثٍ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَاهُ وَأَنَّ النَّاجِيَةِ مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ هُوَ وَأَصْحَابُ He said that the Messenger of Allah also informed, he said that my ummah would divide into 73 sects, and that the one that is saved from amongst them is what he was upon in Cree and the companions, meaning his companions, of course. And you will find that this individual who's upon the Sobuf, that he says, ثُمَّ قَالْ فَلَزِمَ الْأُمَّةَ قَاطِبَةً مَعْرِفَةُ مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّحَابَةُ وَلَمْ يَكُنِ الْوُصُولُ إِلَيْهِ إِلَّا مَنْ جِيهَةِ التَّابِعِينَ لَهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ الْمَعْرُوفِينَ بِنَقْلِ الْأَخْبَارِ مِنْ مَنْ لَا يَقْبَلُ الْمَذَاهِبِ الْمُحْتَثَةِ We already mentioned this. He says, upon that, is binding upon the Ummah, meaning the Muslims, unanimously, قَاطِبَةً Unanimously, the knowledge of what the companions were upon in regards to creed, of course, and that they would not be able to, of course, attain that matter based upon the fact that those who conveyed the message after the Sahaba, of course, were the tabi'een, of those who followed them with perfection, then they pass it on, of course, to those trustworthy scholars in which, like we said, the chains were all connected and it was not accepted of those who came with newly invented what? Understandings and newly invented what? Matters or any type of way in which you'll find that they tried to take a different direction preserving the religion, or they so-called wanted to take another understanding or another type of way or another type of belief, except that you'll find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? Destroyed it. Or Allah humiliated it. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it from those matters in which that if a person was to embrace it, they would be led astray. As we mentioned. Because some must say outside that they're kind of loud and we can hear them. It's your father, he goes on to mention to say that your father, he says, the affair will not be attained except from those from the tabi'in, of those who followed them with perfection, who are known by conveying the narrations upon the message of Allah, from in which you'll find that it was not accepted, newly invented madhahib, newly invented understandings or ways or creeds. He says, you'll find that the chains were connected from one generation after, ne- after the next. And those narrators in which the chains were connected by were known for uprightness within themselves and known for uprightness in their belief and being the most greatest of those who are trustworthy. And those you shall find that Allah made them the reasons in which the religion was preserved because they put forth their utmost efforts sacrificing everything they had in order to make sure that the religion was what? Preserved and stayed in its purest form. So those that came after them received the religion similar to how they were received it. So it would not be in a manner that is distorted or tainted or polluted or watered down. Because everyone's success in this world and the hereafter all relies upon them following the religion in its purest manner in its purest form. Not something that was newly invented, not something that's a cultural practice that goes against the religion, or something that was newly introduced, or something like we said during the time of the Sahaba they did not practice. Rather, it might have came two or three hundred later years later, and as a result, the people started what following it and practicing it, and as a result, they went astray. You'll find that this is a person to solve saying these affairs, as we mentioned, person to solve. So Shaykh al Islam say, you see what he's saying? Listen, this is what I'm saying. This is someone who you honor and revere and hold in high esteem. And he's saying exactly verbatim of what I'm saying. I'm not saying anything new. If this is your scholar of who you hold in high esteem saying this, 
Why are you accusing me of saying something well? Something that you think in your mind is in opposition to what I'm calling to. So that's what you'll find in this book of Al-Habawiyah, which you'll find, like we said, him citing the statement of these individuals in order to establish that what he was upon was something that was what? Correct. And he was just merely calling the people to return back to what would give them success and give them what? Prominence. But you'll find the last statement, which was which we'll mention, inshallah, before we move on. Notice he said that my ummah will what? Divide into 73 sects. In which the message of Allah, of course, mention of those who will be saved from amongst them, مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ هُوَ وَأَصْحَابُ What he was upon, the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions, which like we mentioned, it said, those affairs that take precedence to make one successful is what the message of Allah was upon in creed and belief. Those matters, like we said, is what is obligatory and binding upon every Muslim in the ummah, no matter where he is, what background he comes from, or what culture he comes from, or what land, or nationality, or what have you. That matter is binding upon every human being to grasp and adhere to what the message of Allah was upon and to stay firm upon that matter until death comes to him. Those matters of the utmost importance as we mentioned. So he said to the point where this statement that was made, this is what he says, فَلَزِمَ الْأُمَّةَ قَاطِلَ It's binding upon the ummah unanimously, all of them, to have knowledge of what the companions were upon as we said last class. You'll find that the great Imam al-Shaykh Muhammad Ahmad al-Jami, rahimahullah, he said about this. He said, إِذَا تَأَكَّدْتَ أَنَّ فَهْمَكَ لِلْدِينِ وَمَا جَاءَ بِهِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَامُهُ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ مُوَافِقٌ لِفَهْمِ الصَّحَابَةِ بِتَتَبُّعِكَ لِآثَارِ الصَّحَابَةِ وَالتَّابِعِينَ وَالتَّابِعِ التَّابِعِينَ كَمَا فَعْلَ ذَلِكَ الشَّيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ فِي هَذِهِ الرِّسَالَةِ تَأَكَّدْتَ بِأَنَّ مَفْهُومَكَ كَمَفْهُومِهَمْ إِحْمَدِ اللَّهِ عَلَى ذَلِكَ He said, you'll find that if you are certain that your understanding of the religion and what the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was upon and it agrees with the understanding of the companions and that you now you put forth your utmost effort in scrutinizing and investigating and making sure that you're following the narrations of the Sahaba and, it, and those who follow them who are called the Tabi'een and those who came after them who are called the followers of the Tabi'een just as Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah did in his book and you're sure that your understanding is like theirs then praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that because you have understood the religion in the correct way a correct understanding in which Allah is pleased with those who went outside of that understanding they are the ones as we mentioned it said in which Allah's threat and punishment will come to them you'll find as an ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we know in his book says وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ دُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَأَتْ مُصِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book Whoever opposes the messenger meaning following another way another understanding of Islam another belief another type of fundamentals or another type of, of affairs of creed or belief, especially in the matters which are the most important of all of them, which is the belief that comes in, in the hadith of Jibreel. That we believe in Allah, His Messenger, the angels, the books, the prophets, the messengers, the affairs of the unseen, and the affairs of the qadr. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is binding upon everyone to follow how the message of Allah exactly believed in. And to the point where Allah says in the ayah, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولِ After the clear guidance have been what? Has been now made to him. And he follows away other than the believers. You'll find that the meaning of believers in the eye of everyone is the companions. You follow away, meaning you understand the religion of Islam other than how they understood it. Or you follow the affairs of creed other than the affairs of how they understood it. Now listen to what Allah says. مِنْ بَعْتِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاءَةَ مُصِيرًا We will turn him of what he is turned to. 
and we will burn them in hell and what an evil abode it is. So the affair pertaining to adhering to what the message of Allah was upon and calling the people to that, especially in the most important of all affairs, which is belief and creed, and to adhere to that affair until death comes to you is of the utmost importance. It's not just the mere fact that you have financial stability and you think you've attained victory, even though in your religion and your belief you have some type of discrepancy. And dying upon that in the grave is something that's extremely dangerous. Because the affairs in which the angels are going to check into your grave is immediately when you die and everyone will now cover you up in the dirt, put the shovel of the dirt on top of your grave. And then everyone will walk away. And no one will come and remain there. You'll be in your grave and you'll be dead and you'll be alone. All of us. That is our reality. That is what we're going to end up inevitably. No one is going to save you. Everyone is going to put the dirt over your grave and they're going to walk away. Now the only thing remaining is who? You, Allah, and the angels. And the angels are going to ask you questions pertaining to what everyone? Your belief in your creed first. They're going to ask you, who's your Lord? Creed. Who's your religion? Creed. Who's the prophet? Creed. All of this belief. Every single question is connected with belief. Your creed, your conviction, your belief. Check it in and investigate it and scrutinize it. Why? Because the angels know that that is the source of your what? Success. Everything after that, then the what? The affairs of the deeds will be checked. Of course, those deeds of what you've done could be a means for you being tortured in the grave. Or it could be a means for you being what? Being, uh, receiving, receiving pleasure and bliss in the grave. As we know, those who die upon Iman, the grave will be what? A form of purification for them and then it eventually will stop. But those who die in the state of Kufr won't even have a chance. Why? Because their creed was what? Incorrect. Un unacceptable. The creed was unacceptable. The angels would say, and listen to your answer, and to the point they would say, Ha ha la adri, qultu kema qultu kema qal al nas. Samirta nas yaqulun fa qultu. As it says in the narration. That the person whose creed was, in, was incorrect, and the person's creed that was upon another way of the Messenger of Allah, they're going to say, Ha ha la adri, qultu kema qal al nas, or samirta nas yaqulun fa qultu. They will say in the narration, he says, oh, oh, I don't know. I heard the people say such and such, and I said it. Those type of matters, everyone, like we said, is what is the inevitable reality for any one of us at any given moment. No one knows when they will what? Die. As we know, especially during these days, excuse me, especially during these days that we're living in right now, the narration which the Messenger of Allah had mentioned about these times, the Sayyak Thuru Finnas Motul Fajr, like from the signs of the hour, is that there will be a widespread abundance of sudden death. Mm. That's from the signs of the day of resurrection. It says, Sayyak Thuru Finnas Motul Fajr. There will be a widespread amongst the people, what everyone? Sudden death. That is from the signs of the hour. That is from what? What we see today. Those type of matters, as we said, everyone, one wants death to come to him, and he's upon what is correct in his creed. Not only correct in his creed, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from the desires of himself, where also his sins also does not pollute his creed. Brothers and sisters, sins can affect your, can affect your iman. In regards to what? you'll find that the poison of sins can trickle down into your belief until you start doubting your religion. And you start becoming extremely weak in it. Yes, the poisons of sins can start trickling down until it affects your belief. Until the point where you now start becoming weak and then as a result of it, you start falling into things that can inevitably lead to disbelief. That's the reason why you'll find that the Salaf used to say that al-ma'asi baridatul kufar. That sins is what will lead you to kufr. It will lead you to it. Not saying that will remove you from the fold of Islam if, as long as you don't believe it's lawful what you're doing. But the affair of the poison of what you do eventually will trickle down into your belief until inevitably it will lead to what? The invalidity of your faith. That's the reason why not only being upon was correct from creed and being sound in that matter, 
but also making sure that you put forth your utmost effort in avoiding the sins due to the fact that the poison of it can eventually trickle down into your belief system and affect it. Those type of matters, brothers and sisters, in which you'll find that Shaykh al-Islam is mentioned here in this book, what the great Imam Muhammad al says, he said, إِذَا عَرَفْ بِأَنَّ مَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ عَقِيدَةِ وَعِبَادَةِ وَأَخْلَةِ وَالسِّيَاسَةِ وَاقْتِصَارِ وَغَيْرِ ذَلِكَ مُخَالَفْ لِمَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّحَابَةِ ثِقْ تَمَامًا بِأَنَّكَ لَمْ تَكُنْ عَلَى هَدِي رَسُولِ صلوات الله عليه وسلامه لأن الصحابة أخذوا هذا الدين من في رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشاهد لهم الرسول بالخيرية He said if you know that what you're upon of creed and worship and morals and character and etiquette and in siyasa and in politics and in economics because religion came and it gave proper guidance in all of those affairs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed proper guidance in all of those matters. And if you know that those matters, you are in opposition, or you're upon an affair that's in opposition to what the companions are upon, he said, then know for sure, thiq tamana, know for sure that you're not upon the guidance of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the Sahaba, as we know, had taken the religion from the mouth of the Messenger of Allah, purely. And the Messenger of Allah, as a result, Testified for them being the best, bil khayriya, being the best of this ummah, in which he said, the best of the people is my generation, they're those who follow them, and those who follow them. The message of Allah particularized, and if you want to say, Allah Himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only chose His Prophet and His Messenger Muhammad sallam, to be the final Prophet and the Messenger and the best of creation, in order for the people to accept. The guidance that he came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his infinite wisdom also chose for him the best of people to be around him, to carry the religion, to deliver it and convey it to the people. That's the reason why you'll find that the evil, what the Shia and the Rawafid are upon is of the utmost evil. Why? Because as if you're saying that Allah had chosen for the best of this ummah to convey it were the most wicked of people. Due to the fact you'll find that they curse Abu Bakr and Umar. And even they have a supplication that's called Dua as salamain You'll find that the Rawafid and the Shia, everyone, they have a Dua which is called Dua as salamain The Dua of the two idols. Who are the two idols? Abu Bakr and Umar. Radiallahu anhuma. And they also say in the Dua as salamain they say, O oh Allah, il'an salama, salamain al-nab. Curse the two idols of the hellfire. Curse, curse the two idols. They talk about Abu Bakr and Umar and their two daughters. Hafsa and Aisha. Radiallahu anhuma. Curse them. Like we said, everyone, these type of beliefs are the what? Most wicked of them. How in the world do you think that Allah will send the final revelation and then choose the most wicked of people to be around him? To convey it, to carry it, and convey it, and not be trustworthy, rather being very treacherous and very evil. Even from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from that aspect, that's unacceptable. How is it that Allah sends his final prophet and then surrounds him the most wicked of people? It doesn't make any sense. Knowing the fact that the religion has to be what? Remain intact and that have to be what? Conveyed to those who will come after. And those who will come after, the only way that the religion will remain intact. Is that also that that prophet and messenger be surrounded by what everyone? The most trustworthy, purest, righteous, and reliable people. That's the reason why, like we mentioned, these affairs are from our creed. And this is why we teach it to the people. And I'm even starting to hear things in my ears of affairs. Well, now you'll find that people are starting to talk about the rulers again. Here we go with Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, here goes Shaitan again. Saudi Arabia, why is everybody focused on Saudi Arabia? You need to be focused on this land here. This land and all the filth that what is, what is emanating from it. But everybody for some odd reason wants to talk about Saudi Arabia, this, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, brothers and sisters, the, the, what happened in the past is worse than what you see today. A person will say how? Do you know that during the time, of, even during the Sahaba, when some of them were living, of what happened with 
Well, Abd al-Malik ibn Marwan, and from his nuwab was Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi, who was known that he killed millions of people, millions of Muslims. And you'll find that the Sahaba was still saying what? Still adhere and obey to the ruler. Then people now want to talk about all well, the rappers that they're bringing and they're paying them $150 million. Ya akhi, you have creed of salaf, of the salaf. Those people in the past killed people. What's worse? And despite of that, you'll find that the Sahaba say, there's no way that these type of people, of course, in this regard, except you'll find that they always turn the mirror to themselves first. They're saying that these affairs are happening because we are in an evil state. We as the people are messed up. And then as a result of it, Allah puts those in authority over us who are similar to the people. Meaning, they will always take self-accountability of themselves first, not blaming the leadership. They will always take themselves into reckoning account. And that's the problem was lost amongst the people today. No self-accountability for anything anymore. Everything is your fault, your fault, your fault, your fault. It's your fault. It's the leadership fault. It's the imam's fault. It's this, it's this, it's that. Then you look at the social media, there you go. Self-explanatory while we're in the situation we're in. It's clear. Those type of affairs, brothers and sisters, again. The, this is the creed in which the message of Allah even said in a hadith, which is in Sahih Muslim. He said, they will be rulers over you with the hearts and the forms of devils, he said. He says, Insan fi juthma, shayateen fi juthman al ins, as it says in the hadith of Sahih Muslim. He said, Devils in the forms of what? Human beings. Those rulers will be over you. Is that clear? Is that not clear? If that's not wretched and wicked, what is it? What is? That's wretched and that's wicked. It says Sahih Muslim. And despite of that, the Messenger of Allah said, What do we do, a Messenger of Allah, if we reach that time where we see these type of rulers? To the point where you said that their hearts is like the hearts of devils or their shayateen in the form of what? They're in the form of human beings. And they've been put in power and in charge of us, running our affairs and governing our affairs. What do we do? He said, adhere to the what? Obedience of the ruler. Even, of course, if he strikes your back or if he takes your wealth, hear and obey to him. And you carry out his right. Who? For them? No, for Allah. Because that's Ya'qida in which Allah has binded upon you to submit to. Not for the rule himself, but for Allah and his messenger and the belief in which these affairs are considered from the fundamentals and the foundations of your religion. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his infinite wisdom knows that once these affairs are chaotic, the land will be in a state of chaos. There will be nothing but murder, bloodshed, pillage, and all types of mass hysteria within society from them, and you've witnessed and tasted these type of affairs, when people come and will start throwing things and windows and businesses, people will start setting cars on fire, people will start raping women, and people will eventually die, or they will be seriously harmed and injured. That's the reason, and from the hikam of why, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set down these type of affairs to know that the preservation of the sanctity of society is more what? Is more important than how you feel in regards to that leader being so-called wretched in your eyes or what you know about him of his evil. That's the reason why these affairs are considered from our creed and our belief and why we're supposed to submit to it. Not to so-called as they say, oh y'all bagla to sultan, or y'all jawasis wa umala, wali al-amr or wulat al-umur, that oh you guys are just spies for the Muslim rulers, or you guys are just what? Employees, or you're the bagla to sultan, you're the she camel, you're the camel, the of the ruler. No, this is Aqidah to Salaf. And in actuality, when you're now humiliating us, you're humiliating the text and the revelation in which the Messenger of Allah had informed with is a whole chapter on it, brothers and sisters. It's probably about it reached the level of maybe four hundred narrations. Why? Because Allah had in his infinite knowledge knew there will be times there was going to be wicked rulers. And what we're supposed to do when it happens? That's the reason why we have all these narrations. Because the affair was what? Was known. There was going to be in lands, rulers that were going to be what? Evil. And despite of that, Allah saved us with giving us proper guidance. And despite of that, what does the Muslims want to do? They always want to follow the West and their chaotic so-called nonsense. Taking with perfection and clear guidance laid out for them so they can have harmony. And they want to take the what? Not hard route in regards to not only just in belief, but making more life difficult upon themselves. 
and difficult upon your families and stressing your own self out. When you did not have to do any of those affairs, but to just be what? Patient. And make sure that yourself is rectified first. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees it, he will make the affair and the outcome where he will appoint as a gift for society, a righteous ruler. Because a righteous ruler for a land is a gift from Allah due to the righteousness and the uprightness of the people first. And if the people are messed up, those are the type of people that's going to be in charge over you. Why? Because of the people and their lack of self-accountability. And as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the what? Those type of wretched people upon them to run their affairs. So the affair also, like we said, during the time of the Sahaba, they always took themselves into account. All the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not remove the affair unless we what? Change ourselves and rectify our matters. Number one, in creed first. Number two, by leaving off the wicked beliefs, the wicked filth of believing Allah is everywhere, and the filth of philosophy, and the filth of bid'ah, and all of its affairs, whether it be pertaining to its, its roots or its branches, and what branches off from it, and all the other affairs of creed in which you'll find that the Muslims have fell into. And as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only will he appoint a ruler, Allah might send a punishment upon the ummah as a result of them falling into deviant, wicked beliefs, and falling into affairs that oppose the pure Islam, as I'll bring some of the athar of the salaf, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down punishments of the ummah, punishments, as a result of believing the wicked beliefs of the jahmiyyah, or the wicked beliefs of the people, bid'a and the mu'tazila, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either destroyed them by a punishment being sent down upon them, or by an evil ruler being appointed over them, and him what? Now, enforcing tyranny upon them until he was killing them by the thousands until he reached the millions. All that is a punishment from Allah as a result of the people and their type of affairs that they do not have in order. Keep in mind, stop forgetting the affairs of what? The son of were upon. Anytime there were evil, wicked rulers, they always returned back to themselves, rectifying themselves first. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing in regards to my obligations to my Lord? What am I doing in regards to my connection and my iman? What am I doing? Because once I rec- we rectify our affairs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the punishment. Fine, so let's keep going. You'll find, as he said, the Prophet sallam, he was not the only one that was chosen as being the prophet and messenger to all humanity and being the best of people and the best of all and the most purest of them. Also, from revelation, and you'll, excuse me, also from Allah, and from the best of affairs, and from His infinite wisdom, complete wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surrounded His best prophet with the best of people. And for you now to curse the companions, is as if you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had what? Miscalculated. Oh, he, he was off in regards to who He chose for Him to be surrounded by. Because like we said, the religion is not only by a prophet and messenger, but the people around them who what? Learn it, understand it, and then convey it. So it could be what? Spread to the people who come after. That's the reason why not only was the messenger of Allah trustworthy, he was also surrounded by the what? Trustworthy individuals. To understand the religion, carry it, and convey it. So other people who came in later generations will be saved and not be from the inhabitants of hell. Those type of matters, everyone, so we keep going. Subhanallah, tatahaddath al yawm fil masjid, tatatalmad fihi ashaba rasulillah ala rasulillah, ta'allamu deenahum min fi rasulillah, min had al masjid. He's talking about the affairs of al Madina and the knowledge that was taken and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them to be in the same city, doing exact, in the exact same place in which the Messenger of Allah was upon, and then a person that is allowed to be in that same city. Doing the exact same thing, which is a very good, very great blessing. But so let's keep going. So let's now go back to the affair what I want to speak about today. Listen to what you'll find that Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, that he goes on to say about the matters pertaining to the word nafs. And that's what we want to speak about today. He said, ذكر أسماء الله تعالى وصفاته مما ذكر الله في كتابه وما تبين من صفاته في سنته 
وما وصف به نفسه مما سنذكر قول القائلين بذلك مما لا يجوز لنا في ذلك أن نرده إلى أحكام عقولنا بطلب الكيفية بذلك ومما قد أمرنا بالاستسلام له But we wanted to talk about, I'm going to keep going. Ila anqa. Now this is where we want to talk about today. This is very important. Muhammad ibn Khafif, from the people to Tasawwuf, affirming the principles, as we know, in which Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah affirmed in so many of his, of his books, in so many of his works, saying the exact same thing of the affairs pertaining to what was the belief of the companions in regards to the greatest of all matters and the greatest of all beliefs. What is the greatest of all beliefs, everyone? The knowledge of Allah and His names and attributes. To know about our Lord is from the greatest of all what? knowledge, if not the greatest of all knowledge. To know about the one who created you. What's His names? What's His attributes to the end of it? Then he goes on to say, He says, بما بدأ به من أسمائه وصفاته وأكده عليه الصلاة والسلام بقوله فقابلوا منه كقبولهم لأوائل التوحيد Now listen to this He said after this and this is the statement continuing from Muhammad ibn Khafif He said until he says and verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acquainted to us meaning that we know him after affirming the oneness of Allah In regards to what? His, his lordship, of course. And we know the lordship meaning his actions. And the conferment of what? His worship. Then what Allah, of course, mentions in this book, after. Tahqiq, meaning after scrutinization or investigation, in which you'll find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions the affairs of his names and his attributes. But to the point you'll find in the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he put emphasis On this matter by saying فَقَبِلُوا مِنْ Meaning what the message of Allah taught of these principles What we just mentioned okay. He said فَقَبِلُوا مِنْهُ كَقَبُولِهِمْ لِأَوَاقِ لِلتَّوْحِيمِ مِنْ ظَاهِرِ قَوْلِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Now listen to this he, Now this is a matter that I want everyone to be very attentive of You'll find that those Muslims out there who say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us all Muslims in the Qur'an So why do we have to now bring the names such as Sunni, Salafi, Athari, Athar, or those who follow the Athar, and to the end of it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us, called us all Muslims in the Qur'an. You'll find also, this particular matter correlates to what we're going to mention also. So, number one is, the affair pertaining to To Muslims in the Quran is what you call mujma. That's called general. You'll find there are narrations that bring what they call the mufassal, that brings the, the detail that you need to properly understand it. And that will give affairs more intricately and give you more what? Clarity in this regard. So you have what is mujma, what is general. Then you have something that is what? Mufassal, something that has been explained in detail. For example, you'll find that the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives the Mufassal, he gives the detail by saying there'll be 33 of his Ummah in the Hellfire. All except one. All of those sects, all of them call themselves what? Exactly. Get it? He understood it. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentioned that called us all Muslims in the Qur'an And then you'll find the detail of the affair going back to the authentic sunnah where the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there will be those Muslims that are upon his way or ascribed to, to him alayhi salatu wasalam, all of them being in the hellfire except one all of those sects call themselves what everyone? Muslim. Exactly. All of them call themselves Muslims who the message of Allah clearly said in that authentic narration that they will be in the hellfire. Based upon that narration, there has to be something of another thing in which to clarify and for them to be identified. Where they're not part of those sects in which has been what? 
deviated in order to be from those sects that went into the hellfire due to the fact of their discrepancies and their wicked beliefs that they adopted, and as a result, they became from its inhabitants. Meaning, the inhabitants in which they will have to be purified of, in which we'll talk about later, inshallah. The point of the matter is, everyone, all of those sects that the Messenger of Allah informed were what? All said they were Muslim. That particular narration is the Mufassal. Is it clear? It gives you the detail. So, not everybody that says that they're Muslim is upon was what? Correct. Even though Allah generally mentioned the Quran, that of course He called us Muslim. But the Messenger of Allah, which Allah revealed to him, that said that they will be from amongst His Ummah who calls themselves Muslims, but due to their deviation and discrepancies in their belief system, they will what? Be from the inhabitants of hell. Except what? One in which the Messenger of Allah gave the exception. This is where the name Sunni Salafi came from, which is what am I upon? Meaning, those who follow my Sunnah, those who follow the understanding of my companions, and of course the narration which says Al Jama'ah. When the word Jama'ah means, what does it mean? Meaning, Al Jama'at Al Ula, the first group who are the companions. So when I'm upon my sunnah, that's what it was extracted from it, sunni. What the companions are upon, what is extracted from that, salafi. Meaning, I ascribe to what the companions understand. So the names of what? Those who follow the sunnah, those who follow the understanding of the companions, them ascribing to that affair, to in order to identify myself that I am from those who the message of Allah gave the exception of those being saved. Because those were the only exception that the Messenger of Allah والسلام, gave as an exception. Of those who be saved from the inevitable punishment of Allah in the hereafter, for them, even though all of them call themselves Muslims, but there has to be a certain group from amongst the Muslims who have to be what? Singled out and identified from all those other Muslims who have the Messenger of Allah informed that would go to the hellfire. So generally, a person would say, oh, they're all Muslim. He would say, yes, actually, that's mujma. It's general. But the Messenger of Allah made the Mufassal, given a detail in his authentic sunnah by saying, those 73 sects in hell, and all of them call themselves Muslims. There has to be an identification in which they are separated and they're distinct from them. From them, like we said, the Messenger of Allah said, when I'm upon, meaning my sunnah. And as a result, the people ascribe themselves to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Second, what my companions are upon. And then another narration says, al jamaah The meaning of jamaah here, everyone, is the first group meaning the companions. al jamaah al ula The first group. Who are the companions. You're ascribing yourself to that, that group of the best in which the Messenger of Allah had, had testified for them being the best of this ummah. That's when you ascribe to the salaf. Who wish the Messenger of Allah mentioned the hadith. The best of my generation is what I'm upon and those who follow them, and those who follow them. The best of that generation, ascribing yourself to them, that affair is considered what everyone? An affair that's acceptable in the religion to the point where Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah mentioned in another statement that we all know. He said, لا عيب على من أظهر منهج السرف واعتزى إليه وانتسب إليه فيجب قبول ذلك بالاتفاق فإن مذهب السرف لا يكون إلا حقا You'll find that Shaykh al-Islam that he mentions in Majmu' al-Fatawi. He said, Rahimallah. He said, لا عيب على من أظهر من هج السلف ودعا إليه واعتزى إليه وانتسب إليه There is no ridiculement upon the person that now professes openly that he ascribes to the methodology of the salaf. And the one who calls to it, ascribes to it, and affiliates himself to it. And he said it's obligatory that by acceptance, unanimously, that one accepts it from that individual, but it divap. For verily the method of salaf is nothing except the pure truth. Meaning, what the message of Allah was upon and is what everyone, his companions. Those affairs and what they are, what they are upon of creed, in which the message of Allah, like, like we said, described them as being the safe sect from all the other Muslims that cause themselves what? Muslims. Keep in mind what I just mentioned, everyone. Saying the affair, first category is mujman. Second category, whatever you want, mufassal. 
what is generalized, which is, for example, Muslim in the Quran, and what was specified or given detail, which is in why everyone, where, where everyone, in the authentic Sunnah. Is it clear? In the authentic Sunnah. So the Messenger of Allah said that there will be Muslims from amongst his Ummah that will what? be in hell. And they all say La ilaha illallah, and they will all say what? Muhammad Rasulullah. And there's only one exception. That exception, where they have to identify and keep themselves distinct from the rest of them. In which there has to be a name, in which they are identified, in which they ascribe to. That affair what one now ascribes to, you have to now, that has to agree with your belief, your creed, and your methodology of how you give down and what you call the people to. Because now you're given a claim that if now what you're upon, what you call to, makes you a liar, that is greater. Why? Because you're now misleading the people by the so-called narrations which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had made obligatory for the Muslims to make themselves clearly distinct from the other sects. And for you to deceive the people in this regard is something greater. That's the reason why you'll find on 45th Street, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Zura wal Kadiba, lying and distorting and misleading the people because they are not a part of that affair at all. They're on something that's total contrast. But the people of from the non-Muslims know that the people now, especially the Muslims these days, are trying to now return to an affair that Allah will bless. And once they now see that type of enthusiasm from the people, this is where the people even want to take advantage. So they'll come with all these different types of ways and names to say, yeah, we're Salafi, yeah, we're Sunni, yeah, we're, we're this and that. And then now when you look and scrutinize what they're truly going to, it's still something that's what, in total contrast to what they ascribe to. Is it clear, everyone? Right. The other affair, what I want to speak about, is similar to what I just mentioned. Mujmal, Mufassal. Mujmal, Mufassal. Is the word nafs. As a person might say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a nafs, we say yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a nafs. Yes. I'm going to explain it, don't worry. You'll find that Muhammad ibn Khafif that he said in this regard, he said, إِذَا أَنْقَالْ بِإِذْبَاتِ نَفْسِهِ بِالتَّفْصِيلِ مِنَ الْمُجْمَلِ He said, you'll find that the Sahaba, they accepted of all the categories of Tawheed, the Awa'il Tawheed, مِنْ ظَاهِرِ قَوْلِهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ All those matters they submitted to, from the Lordship of Allah, the worship of Allah, which is also the greatest of affairs and the most important of them. Until, of course, they also accepted the affirmation of the nafs of Allah, bi ithbati nafsihi. The nafs of Allah, which Allah Himself says in His book. Don't worry, I'm going to explain it. So, Allah, you'll find in ayat in the Quran, and also in also authentic narrations where Allah calls and describes to Himself, sifatu nafs, the characteristics of the nafs of Allah. Don't worry, I'm going to explain it. Bit tafsir min al mujmal. By giving details from what was generalized. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Taha, ayah number 41, وَاسْطَلَعْتُكَ nafsi, O Musa, I've chosen you for myself. Meaning I created you for myself. I created you for myself. وَاسْطَلَعْتُكَ nafsi, I created you for myself. It's an ayah, Surah Al-Taha, ayah number 41. Another ayah, Surah Al-Imran, ayah number 21, 28, 28, 28, in Al-Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ Allah warns you of Himself. وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ نَفْسَهُ Allah warns you of Himself. وَلِسَحَّةِ ذَلَكْ وَاسْتِقْرَارِهِ نَاجَاهُ الْمَسِيحِ Also, of course, the validity of that, and for the validity of that, and that affair being settled, in which you'll find that Jesus, the son of Mary, also secretly, of course, or that affair on the day of resurrection, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring forth Jesus and his mother. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 116. You'll find that on the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as it comes in the last, matter of fact, the last page is Surah Al-Ma'idah, last page. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He will bring Jesus and His mother, and 
Ya Isa ibn Maryam, a anta qulta lil nas ittakhiduni wa ummiya ilahayn min dunillah. That Allah will say on the day of resurrection, O oh Jesus, the son of Mary, did you tell the people to take you and your mother as deities besides Allah? You'll find in that ayah, everyone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, of course, Jesus the son of Mary will reply on the day of resurrection. Now listen, this is the point of evidence. Here in this verse, تَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِي وَلَا أَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِي He says, you know what's in myself, but I don't know what's in yourself. Is it clear? So that's the point of evidence. In these ayats, we affir- what do you see everyone? Allah is affirming what? The characteristic of what? Nafs. Just keep going. When you say nafs here, this is what Self. Self. Okay. Self. Because I'm, I'm thinking desire, so... No, nafs means self. Nafs, self. Okay. See, even in common language. Okay. I don't to be nafsi. I came myself. Me, myself came. Okay. You understand? Okay. Nafs just means myself. No, self. Self. Tayyip. وَأَكَّدَ السَّحَةَ إِثْبَاتِ ذَلِكَ فِي سُنَّتَيْ Allah, the messenger, we just mentioned the verses in the Quran, right everyone? It says, Mutri authentic sunnah. You'll find the affirmation of that in the authentic sunnah in the hadith of Qudsi, which is in Bukhari, in Muslim. Where Allah Himself says in the hadith of Qudsi, مَنْ ذَكَرَنِي فِي نَفْسِهِ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي نَفْسِي Whoever mentions me within himself, I will mention him with what? Within myself. Nairish is authentic. Every Muslim knows that's authentic. وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام كتب كتاب بيده على نفسه إن رحمتي سبقت غضبي. Verily, Allah wrote a book, and this narration says, within his hand, upon himself. Verily, my mercy precedes my wrath. Verily, my mercy precedes my wrath. My wrath. Also, the authentic sunnah, which comes in Bukhari Muslim, in the Adhkar al-Sabah, and the narrations pertaining to what one would mention after he prays Fajr, which is considered from the morning remembrances, in which the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it is very virtuous, where he said, Subhanallah, he read on nafsih, wa adada khalqihi, wa read on nafsihi, wa midadi kalimah, excuse me, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, عدد خلقه الحمد لله جسم ربع عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وبداد كلماته سبحان سبحان الله عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه ووزن تعرشه وبداد كلماته that's the narration it's four that a person would say in the morning in the morning only he won't say this throughout the evening he says of course the one would say سبحان الله عدد خلقه وريضا نفسه ووزن تعرشه ومداد كلماته three times that's it in the morning عدد خلقه وريضا نفسه ووزن تعرشه ومداد كلماته and you'll find that in the authentic sunnah which is the most greatest of adhkar and it saves you time and energy to let you know if he was to follow that small remembrance, it would dominate and destroy all the ways of the innovative practices of Tasawwuf, in which people make thousands and thousands of innovative practices, and you'll find, like we said, everyone, that is all fruitless. And you also rendered yourself weary and tired. When you could have just said what? Three lines. In the morning. In which you'll find that he walked upon one of the one of his wives, alayhi salatu salam, and she was also doing a lot of what? Dhikr. To the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, All of that you're doing, you're exhausting yourself, you said three things, it will be suffice, suffice with all that you're doing and more. He said, Say, Subhanallah, Adada Khalqihi, Urida Nafsihi, Wazinata Arshihi, Umidadika, Wamidadika. The point of the hadith, everyone, it says in the narration, Rida nafsihi. Glory be to Allah, Rida nafsi. The pleasure of himself, of him, himself, no, of himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's in the authentic sunnah. And we know that that narration is authentic. In Bukhari and Muslim, rather it's considered from the remembrances of the morning, which one would make after he prays pleasure. 
Is it clear? Also, you'll find in the narration fi muhajjati fi muhajjati Adam li Musa, in which you'll find in the narration of the argument of what had taken place between Adam and Musa, عليه الصلاة والسلام or عليه الصلاة والسلام وعلى في من سيء Adam. He's also a prophet, of course. أنت الذي استفاك يستفاك الله واستنعك لنفسه. You are the one Musa which Allah has chosen and he created you for himself. Is it clear everyone? So you'll find that all these narrations affirms in the authentic sunnah and also what? Also the verses in the book of Allah the affirmation of the word nafs or sifat to nafs the characteristic of the nafs of the self. What does that mean? We'll talk about it next class inshallah. <laughs> You'll find that this narration is no similar to the other characteristics of Allah. For example, the face of Allah, the affairs of the hand, the fingers of Allah, the hands of Allah, exact same thing. It's no different. Just because it's an affirmation for the creation, in which you'll find that those words agree in the general sense of the meaning, does not mean that there's any what resemblance between them. Once, of course, they are all ascribed to each one, that all of them does not necessitate that they what resemble one another. At all. So just because we affirm the nafs of Allah does not mean that it's what? Similar to the nafs of the creation. And those affairs which we'll talk about in detail last next class. However, the last part I'll mention in the, the affair pertaining to Mujmal. Because that's what I wanted to speak about. And now I'll leave it off here. He said, for example, the affairs pertaining to Mujmal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us detail from the generality. He said, وَمِمَّا قَبِلَ مِنْهُ sahaba إِذْ بَعْتَ اللَّهِ نفسه لنفسه صفة النفس لنفسه بالتفصيل من المجمل لم يكتفي بالمجمل قد يوجد هناك ما هو مجمل ويحتمى أن يقال من باب المشاكلة ولكنه لم يكتفي بذلك فصل تفصيلا طيب so you find that the ayat which you will finally say for example the Isa is Surah Al-Ma'idah everyone if you go to the last page in Surah Al-Ma'idah the people of innovation, you'll find that they say, for example, that Allah mentions in this verse, you, Isa will say on the day of resurrection, you know it's in myself, but I don't know what's in what? Yours, within yourself. That is an indication to what's what, everyone? Mujman. That's general. So they say, that necessitates, if you was to read this ayah, that there's some type of resemblance. That's what they say. And they'll say to you, is there anything that now would remove this type of context in the book of Allah or the authentic sunnah? We say yes. What now gives the detail is in the ayat, which is in what? Surah Taha. Just you just said. Surah Taha. That I what? I have created you what? For myself. So now the ayat is making it exclusive. That just because now the word nafs was used in that ayat, in which Isa ibn Maryam had mentioned. Now you have eyes where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just used it in a manner that was particularizing himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where he said that I created you, O Musa, for myself. Meaning, myself is not similar to what? The creation. Even though at the same time we affirm it because Allah affirmed it for himself. But just because the affair of self has been mentioned in which Allah affirmed it for himself, does not mean that self resembles the selves of the what? Creation at all. Is it clear everyone? Nor do we have to now apply the, the qa'idah or the creed which is called majaz at all. Which is called metaphoric meanings. As I mentioned in the class on, on numerous occasions, the affair of metaphoric meanings is a tahut. Especially in regards to the affairs pertaining to the names and attributes of Allah. To stay away, far away from the affairs as pertaining to what they call Al-ma'ani al-majaziyya Or what they call majaz Bisifat al-amma Fa'inna al-alama ibn al-qayyam Wasafa bi'annaha min al-tawaghid Fi kitabihi al-musamma bi Al-suwa'iq al-mursala Or you can tusammiyahu Al-mukhtas al-suwa'iq You'll find that Al-alama ibn al-qayyam In his book called Al-suwa'iq al-mursala Ala al-jahmiya al-ma'atila Sending the lightning upon those Who negate the attributes of Allah You'll find in the beginning of his book where he mentioned uh, from the affairs that 
had now led the Muslims astray. From them he mentioned tetwil, distorted meanings and distorted what understandings that the people came with. Then he came and mentioned another affair that, as a result of it, the people went astray. When the people started to introduce the affair, which is called majaz, that Allah metaphorically is saying here, or that Allah metaphorically is saying his face, but that's not what's intended, or Allah has mentioned hand, but that's not what's intended. What's intended is the metaphoric meaning. Or with the people, the so-called Sunnah, you would take in the metaphor of meaning, but what's intended truly is such and such. He said, those affairs are from the Tawahit, in which as a result of it, the Muslims fell into great atrocities, and they went astray as a result of it. As we'll clarify next class, all of it is real. The self of Allah, the nafs, sifat the nafs of Allah, haqiqah. With the nafs for the human being, haqiqah. وَلَيْسَ تِلْكَ الْحَقِيقَةِ كَتِلْكَ الْحَقِيقَةِ I'll say this qaida and I'll keep it here. We'll stop. And this is something very important you should memorize. The characteristic of Allah is haqiqa. It's not metaphorically meaning, rather it's what? It's haqiqa, it's haqiqi. Meaning that the meaning is true based upon what? How you read it. The self of Allah is true, it's not metaphor. The self of the human beings is true, it's not metaphor. However, listen to this part. That true meaning is not like that true meaning, even though all of it is true. <laughs> meaning, that's, that affair was affirmed for Allah, that true meaning is not similar to the what? The true meaning that fits the creation. Even though all of it is what? Hatiha. None of it is what? Majaz. Is it clear? All of it is haqiqa. All of it is haqiqi. All of it is not metaphor. Metaphor means in regards to the belief of Allah and His names and His attributes is a ta'ahut. It's obligatory for you to stay away from it. Because you'll find, like we said, they will say that, oh, Allah didn't intend that. So now you're saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most vital and most important of affairs that the apparent so-called meaning is not intended, then that means that the Messenger of Allah did not come with full clarification in the most important and vital of all the affairs of the religion. And at the head of them is what? Allah's names and His attributes. And the affairs pertaining to our Lord Himself. That the Messenger of Allah did not clarify the affair. The affair was what? The Messenger of Allah did not say, you'll never find the Kitab al Sunnah that the characteristic of Allah is mentioned. And then the Messenger of Allah came behind and said, you know what? That meaning was not intended. What was intended was this. You'll never find it. Is it clear? You'll never find the message of Allah doing that in these most important of all matters, which is the fundamentals in which is pertaining to about our Lord Himself, which is the greatest of all knowledge. The Tawheed, the monotheism, and the names and attributes pertaining to Allah Himself, Rabbul Alameen, is the most important of all matters. And how is it now that one would say, Oh, what's intended is metaphor. The apparent meaning is not what's intended. You know how much confusion that would cause? In regards to the people now and embracing Islam, they say, oh yeah, don't believe that. When Allah says hand, that's not what's intended. What's intended is something else. Those type of matters would now cause what? Confusion. In the mind and in the, in the, of the person in which they want to make dua to Allah. And saying, oh, that characteristic, when Allah says mercy, don't believe that. What's intended is this. Oh, when you say ghafoor, that's not what's intended. What's intended is this. So now when I want to make dua, and I'm in a very dire need, and I am in a very, very uh, weak state in my life, let's just say for example. I'm in a weak state, very low state. What am I going to do? Make supplication, but all the names that I know has a meaning to it, I can't use it because that's not what's intended. <laughs> So now, I'm in a state, I want, you know what, mercy of Allah. The reason why I'm saying mercy because I want Allah to what? Have mercy upon me. No, but that, I can't affirm that because that's not what's intended. You know how much confusion in the mind of a person of this will what? Cause. And as a result, people who embrace these type of meanings, like we said, usually go astray, apostate, or they become a Muslim walking around with doubt in their heart concerning their religion, which is also extremely dangerous. To just say that I'm Muslim, but in, in actuality, you have some what? Rejection. 
or aversion towards certain things of your religion in which you say, I don't know about that one. You understand everyone? And like we know from the shurut of la ilaha illallah is what? Surety. Your peen. From the conditions. For now you have some type of what? What goes against your peen? What goes against surety? Doubt. Which is also from the affairs that negates your kalima to shahada. Your word of what? Testimony. Because to meet Allah on the day of resurrection, and in your heart you have some doubt concerning these matters, is meeting Allah in a very what? Very uglified, humiliating state. To meet Allah on the day of resurrection in front of Rabbul Alameen. And you meet in your heart is what? Wavering and quivering and being doubtful in that affair. No one wants to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of resurrection with any type of what? Doubt. Because the ayat in the, in the book of Allah is clear. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالُ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ During the day when no one's wealth, no one's children will benefit or avail them, except the one who, what everyone, comes to Allah with a sound heart. From those affairs of coming to Allah on the day of resurrection, day of resurrection with a sound heart, everyone, is coming to on the day of resurrection, and your heart is firm, like a mountain, firm, stable. I know that when I, on the day of resurrection that this day was going to come. And I have firm belief that I was going to meet you. I have firm belief that this position, this moment was going to come. That I was going to come on the day of resurrection and I was going to be held accountable for everything I did in the past world. And I knew this moment was going to come. And I knew that when I met you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that what everyone, you had names and attributes that I firmly believed in. That you believed that you was all hearing, all seeing, that he had, that he's above, and all those matters. You don't want to meet, meet Allah, Rabbul Alameen and Allah has full knowledge and awareness of what your heart contains and what you have surety in and what you have doubt in. And those matters will all be what? Exposed on the day of resurrection. Yawma tubal as On the day of resurrection where all the secret, all the different types of inconspicuous affairs will be exposed. Your, your, your deeds, your beliefs, your convictions, all of it will be what? All of it will be what? Exposed the doubts you had, the surety you had, but you do not want to meet Allah on the day of resurrection and have some type of what doubt. The first thing that will be investigated before your deeds, before your good and bad deeds, is your belief. That will be scrutinized, it will be checked thoroughly before the deeds. The deeds will come well after. The first test that will have to be perfected is what your creed. Your creed will have to be perfected. Then after that, the deeds will be weighed. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow something other affair to what? Take place because everyone will have different circumstances on the day of resurrection. Everyone will have something different. Certain people will allow, allow them to enter paradise directly, without any regular account. As we know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from them. That's from the people on the day of resurrection. Everybody will have some different circumstances. Certain people will be allowed to enter paradise directly without any regular account. Certain people will, have, will be allowed, certain people will have to be what? Be given a reckon or account. And their deeds will have to be weighed. Certain people, of course, on the day of resurrection, they themselves will be weighed. Then, of course, that we know on the day of resurrection, certain people's scrolls in which the deeds are written will be weighed. And then there will be actually the deeds itself that will be weighed. And then there will be certain people that will have a, a secret gathering, or excuse me, secret, uh, secluded uh, affair with Allah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring them to that, that affair, what they call that secret kenneth, which is the secret, or the, if you want to say, the private affair which Allah will bring His servant on the day of resurrection. And He will say, that You did this and 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 this until the servant will think He's destroyed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow his mercy and say that I have what? I have the deeds in which has been reckoned, which has been reckoned, numerated, and accounted, and I forgive it for you today. Everyone will be what? Of different circumstances on the day of resurrection. And then certain people, may Allah preserve us and preserve you, will have to be punished. Certain people will be punished. And then certain people, the message of Allah will what? Intercede for them. Everyone will have different circumstances on the day of resurrection. Certain people, the message of Allah, the person will be destroyed, the message of Allah will come and intercede for them. As he will come and make be a shafa'ah for ahl kaba'ir. The shafa'ah, which is the intercession of the message of Allah for the people of major sins. 
every affair. And then you have the situation on the day of resurrection, brothers and sisters, from Ashab al araf Then the people who will be in the middle, whose deeds of good are equal, exactly. It's in Surah Al-A'raf, and that's why it's called A'raf. It's called the Surah of the Plains. The reason why it's called the Plains because there will be on the day of resurrection a plain in which the people's good deeds and evil will be exactly equal. And they will look up and see the people in paradise and they will look down and save the people to hellfire. And they will make dua to Allah, Oh Allah, do not make us from, do not make us amongst the people who are the Vali Mean. Meaning don't allow us to be from the inhabitants of hell because when they look down and look at hell, they will become in a very, very scared fright of what they will have, what those people are receiving of torture and pain and suffering. Until the point they'll make dua to Allah, please don't leave us with them. Save us. Until you'll find that those who used to mock at those who they on as you'll find the people that help fire will mock at those on the plains. He said, now you'll find that what? Your Lord has not no mercy upon you. Now, of course, where is it now? Where's your aid now? Until Allah will allow the people of the plains to what? To humiliate the people of Hellfire by saying, are these the people you say that Allah will have no mercy upon? Allah will say in the ayah, enter paradise. Even the people of A'raf. No fear upon you, nor you grieve. And then Allah will humiliate the people of Hellfire again. Where the people of Hellfire will call out, please give us some what? Drink or something which Allah has given to us as provisions. قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَهُمَا عَلْ الْكَافِرِينَ Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the water or any provisions for the people of hell haram upon them. As it says in the ayah, it's a sort of a'raf, it's in there. These are all different types of what? Circumstances, everyone. Of different people will have different what? Circumstances. Then you'll have the people who cross the bridge of hell. Then you'll have the people who have to cross, and then you'll have to come to Then there will be a player, play affairs on the day of resurrection where people will have to stop. No one knows how the affair will be. All they know is that on the day of resurrection, if the people cross hell, there will be a point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow everyone to get their just do right from each other. Because people have to enter paradise and they will have to have nothing in their chest. So anything that you had in your heart, in your chest against someone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow that affair to take place right then and there. So so the affair of having some type of rancor in your heart and chest for any of your brothers or your sister or who have you has to be removed. Because when the affair goes, when the people enter paradise, they will be upon one heart. They have to be upon one what? One heart, and all of them will be upon, like we said, purest form, not only physically, but also what? Inwardly. Because in paradise, there's no more what? Jealousy, envy, rancor, hatred, or any of those affairs. But they have to be removed before they enter paradise. And the affairs are all, like we said, different. A lot of those affairs are different. Circumstances are different on the day of resurrection. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a good ending. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have, like we said, bliss in, the, in our graves and bliss in the hereafter. So we stop here, inshallah. Any questions about the lesson, anyone? So keep in mind what I just said. The, the, the qa'id is what? We affirm the, the affair, the characteristic of nafs. Allah's self. Absolutely. We affirm it. Allah affirmed it. The Messenger of Allah affirmed it. However, the nafs of Allah is not like the what? The self of the human being. Is it clear? Yeah. That reality is not like that reality. It's similarity. It's not the same. Even though they agree in the general sense of the meaning. Is it clear? But now and once it's ascribed to each other, there is no what? Resemblance. Or any what? Similarity. And they're all considered what everyone? Real. And it's not what? Metaphoric. Is it clear? If you understand that, you understood the lesson. Know for sure that the jazz is what? Tawhut. Is it clear? Go back to the book called As-Sawa'ib al-Mursala by Al-Alama ibn Al-Qayyim in which he mentioned in the first part of the book that he said would destroy and allow the Muslims to go astray was Ta'wil and from amongst them is what? Majaz. Majaz. Metaphoric meanings in the Kitab and Sunnah especially in the most greatest of all affairs which is the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those affairs are what? Extremely evil. To say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not intend that, rather right? he intended this. And that that affair was true, the message of Allah would have what? Clarified it. Is it clear? Yeah. I'll stop here. Any questions, anyone? I guess now you have to leave, huh? You have to leave. No problem. No, any questions about the lesson, anyone?
את עדי, אז גרד שגרד 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 حديث الناس بخاري مسلم حديث الافتراق افتراق الأمة حديث الافتراق حضر فواسك اسكز مي أمصار يا صلاح الدين حديث افتراق الأمة السلسلة بداود التلميذي السلسلة بداود التلميذي اسكوز مي ام سوري استغفر الله ام لوكينغ على هذا الحاشية انا واضح اس بخاري مسلم ام لوكينغ على شيء اخر اس بخاري مسلم انا واضح في الاول بخاري مسلم Hadith, if They curse Abu Bakr and Umar. They have a dua. They have a supplication. It's called dua al-salamayn. The supplication of the two idols. The two idols. They call Abu Bakr and Umar the two idols of the hellfire. It's called dua al-salamayn. You can even put it in... Certain people say, how can I find it? If you click in Google, you'd be surprised what comes up. Put dua al-salamayn. If it's Arabic. Dua al-salamayn. The supplication of the two statues, of the two idols. And watch what comes up. From the belief of the Shia and the Rawafat, they curse Abu Bakr and Umar, and they say in their dua, O oh Allah, curse the two idols, and they talk about Abu Bakr and Umar, and their two daughters, which is Hafsa and Aisha, radiallahu anhuma. Curse them. It's called dua al-salamayn. If I had time, inshallah, I'll put it and I'll show everyone. And they still to this day believe this. And they still to this day are plotting, scheming against the people of the Sunnah and trying to make the, the world look, make the people of the Sunnah look bad. As they're the heroes of the people of Gaza, while they keep trying to say, see, Saudi Arabia, they're sitting back not doing nothing. All of it is politics. And all of it is an agenda. And all of it is for them to take over. That's all. Hmm? I'll show you after the class, don't worry. We'll stop here. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahib. Subhanaka Allah, wa hamdak shalom la ilaha ila ant. Stafrika wa tubi lak. Everyone online, if a person can, who knows Arabic, type in Google, put in dua al-salamayn. Du'a'u al-salamayn. Those who know Arabic, write it. Du'a'u al-salamayn. The supplication of the two idols, or the two statues. Du'a'u al-salamayn. I'll show you after class. And watch what comes up. So I don't have to say no more. It's self-explanatory. Yeah.